where blockchain is basically a decentralized internet system. One of the biggest payment services on the internet, like PayPal, has recently started using bitcoins and blockchain technology. And this allows users to transfer data from peer to peer by distributing database to various points regardless of server. Now, therefore, blockchain technology is predicted to affect the way we conduct transactions in the future. And I think the future is it's now here. because exactly. uh, it's already... It has arrived. Now, uh, it's only right that we find out more about about it, like Caroline said, by yes. chatting with reality chain developer and Debio Network CEO, Mbak Pandu Sastro Wardoyo. Hi, good morning, Mbak Pandu. Good morning, Mbak Pandu. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Sea Morning Show. First of all, can you briefly summarize what a blockchain is? Sure. Blockchain, I think it was mentioned, uh, it's focused on decentralization. So when you study the complete computing technology of mankind, you actually see a strange trend here. Mm -hmm. For at least the last 100 years, the tech has swung in either two directions, towards centralization and towards decentralization. Mm -hmm. So in the 1920s, uh, the rise of machines in literal ivory boxes, and then um, late 1950s, the mainframe through many computers, which were centralized systems, and then the internet saw the evolution of what is called Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3. Mm -hmm. uh, web 1 was the initial excitement of HTML and sort of the overhype of the dot-com bubble. And Web 2 was originally a re-democratization of the web. Uh, users become creators of content and the creators of platforms, and open source culture is brought into the web. But there is an issue there. Platforms started to compete with each other for user data and mm -hmm. actually manipulating users for data. And the issue is that Web 2 was not user-owned. Now, uh, Web3 is the promise of a community-owned, user-owned internet platform. And mm -hmm. there are multiple internet platforms that are, that are sprouting up. Um, when we talk about crypto, when we talk about Bitcoin, when we talk about all these things, uh, we're actually talking about um, tokens that support, mm -hmm. um, things that support a platform. And the community ownership of a platform uh, is key in a public blockchain. So uh, the decentralization element uh, is very focused on making sure that the community as the decentralized whole mm -hmm. owns these platforms. So basically it's a way to put the control back in our hands because we can trust each other, we can trust ourselves and basically in layman's terms that's what it is. Now you specialize in metaverse, can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? Sure, uh, I run Reality Chain, uh, which actually just won the Near Protocol uh, Hackathon uh, like a couple of weeks ago. And um, I, I've been on the metaverse for quite some time, like even before blockchain. Um, the metaverse is actually older, an older concept than blockchain. Um, I was in Second Life for many, many years. Um, the social metaverse is a metaverse that are virtual world where we can discuss with each other and uh, have conversations, make friends, and create things. The blockchain or NFT metaverse adds a layer of ownership into mm -hmm. it. And uh, ownership that is not just virtual, not just something that is a, a, a regular database put in a centralized server somewhere, but something that you actually own. When you own a building mm -hmm. inside an NFT metaverse, you actually own the building, um, which is, um, this is something that uh, we're trying to create further. Uh, uh, today, just like we're, we're going to have like this huge, I think you're you're seeing it on screen right mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. with the Octopus Network uh, for their uh, mainnet launch. Uh, that's going to be in the afternoon. So we can make parties within these worlds. We can create wow. buildings within these worlds. <laughs> um, and these are all owned by you. Uh, again, going back to decentralization, it's not owned by a central party. It's owned by multiple people within the community mm -hmm. because everyone owns the tokens. Right. Um, so uh, that's sort of uh, what uh, I'm focusing on. And we are also developing our own metaverse, uh, which is called Reality Chain, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, of which the first engine is called 2Dverse. Uh, you can actually go to 2dvr.se to actually uh, take a look. Uh, and uh, we're going to continue developing um, because the current crop of NFTs and the current crop of blockchain technologies directly support 
how we are going to uh, create the future metaverse. Yeah, I mean, right. this thing is a, is a money-making yeah. thing as, as yeah. well to certain people. Now, but Pandu, you know, if uh, just for me, because I'm very I have like very limited knowledge about this, and that's why I hope you know by having this discussion with you and also with Paul, you know, it kind of enrich my knowledge about this because all I know, you know, my children of age of five of eight of them playing Minecraft and Roblox, <laughs> you know, and when they were talking that they're making buildings and everything, I'm like. You're gonna be an architect. They're like, no, mom. This is like our world. And I'm like, okay. Like, I think mommy has to learn more about this, you know. And you know, you were talking about yep. your metaverse, uh, yours uh, itself uh, just now, but does that mean that in that world you can buy, you know, you purchase, like you said, purchasing land and products right. and buildings in real world prices and also certificates? Correct. So uh, this is something that uh, differentiates Minecraft, Roblox, and like uh, our uh, NFT metaverses and blockchain metaverse. Um, when you are in Roblox, someone else owns the server. Someone mm -hmm. else uh, owns the running of the server, mm -hmm. and the operations mm -hmm. and maintenance. When you're actually using blockchain metaverse, an NFT-based metaverse, the ownership of even the servers, of even the running of the servers, of all of the operational uh, perspectives are run on top of these, uh, um, well, basically, let's, let's call them shares, the, these mini shares mm -hmm. of the platform that everyone basically owns. Uh, this pushes it back to decentralization. This pushes push it the, pushes the control back to the community as well, and uh, that that is sort of a game changer for mm -hmm. uh, everything. There's there's a lot of metaverses out there that already existed, uh, like NFT metaverses. Crypto Voxels is one. I like it. It's amazing. There's also Somnium Space and also Sandbox Lab Game. Mm -hmm. um, all of these uh, look like games, look like Roblox, virtual world, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the ownership layer, that ownership layer is based on the tokenization of blockchain and uh, the capabilities of blockchain to ensure that well, whatever you own, you will always own. Okay, now I'm going to go on that because um, I understand how the monetary system works, I suppose. If you buy an F NFT, some a digital piece of property, mm -hmm. you can exchange sure. that for a, you can put a certain value on it as long as somebody else is willing to pay that pay you that value or what you would value it yourself. However, how does it actually work in this metaverse? Because you did say it's, de I guess the question is more towards decentralization because if it's centralized, then it's obvious uh, somebody creates something, you pay them to use it or buy it and everything goes through them. In fact, maintenance of the site itself, uh, I don't know if you call it a site, but maintenance and, uh, and upgrades uh, come from there. But when it's shared through our yeah. peers, how is that being done? Like, who does the maintenance? Like, what if something happens and needs to be fixed, uh, for, for example? And okay. how, how does one decide um, the value of a certain property? This is actually a very good question. Um, and this goes back to each project's tokenomics. Uh, a metaverse created on the blockchain needs to have tokenomics that are correct. And the idea behind the tokenomics uh, okay. needs to basically go back towards uh, the, the upkeep of the site, well, not the site, the mm -hmm. world, the metaverse. The world, right, okay. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so, uh, the revenue. Uh, so, yeah, not all metaverses are created equal, not even blockchain metaverses. The mm. one thing that is correct is that uh, NFPs are always going to be something that traces, uh, that certifies the ownership of an item. And uh, mm -hmm. that item can be a JPEG, that item can be a, a piece of music, and mm -hmm. that item can be a piece of land in, in, in the metaverse. Now, the, the thing about metaverse projects is, and the thing about a lot of blockchain projects is, um, it is open. Uh, all the smart contracts are all the, out there, everything's audited. And, uh, the ownership mechanisms, the NFTs, are also uh, on, on the blockchain, which means that uh, since everything is open, if there is a new metaverse wishing to build upon an old one that failed, mm. okay. they can actually just use the same NFTs and confer the same ownership mechanism. So oh. um, the current uh, idea is super different from the way enterprise projects used to do things, Web2 projects used to do things, because the ownership is conferred to you in a way that is almost physical. There's mm. almost like a real thing. There's almost like, you know, a physical object. Mm. That ownership is truly yours. Now, uh, the, I mentioned the tokenomics because when you're going into a project, you're buying into a metaverse project, that's something that you need to ensure that the ownership related to the operations and maintenance and the running of the servers 
and the team as well. Mm -hmm. And that uh, entire bit of tokenomics becomes very, very key. But even if that project has issues, your ownership of that NFT is maintained and a future project can basically take over. Right, because then there's uh, you can check with the NFTs, like how much was paid right. for it before. So there's always a uh, record and you can't sure. change those Very things. transparent also. Exactly. But now sure. uh, my question is in this metaverse, is there any protection? Because then you're yeah. like in real world, right. we do need protection. <laughs> but what about in metaverse? Hmm. Yeah, so uh, two types of protections. Of course, one is the protection, the general protection, I guess because you have kids. Uh, protection of like uh, making sure that your kids don't, don't come into like roles that are, that are not yeah. good for them, that are not safe for work, not safe for kids. Um, and uh, those exist. Uh, they are implemented in a decentralized manner through reporting, through moderation, through decentralized moderation is what we call them. Mm -hmm. That's one part of uh, being safe. Uh, the other part of being safe is, of course, uh, making sure that uh, whatever you invest in uh, is, uh, is actually something real. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, this is a uh, this is not a problem for the bigger metaverses. Uh, crypto voxels, uh, Somnium space, uh, everything that's already established, uh, they're there. But it is the problem with like uh, some metaverses that haven't basically delivered on their uh, engine. Uh, like you're just buying a piece of land with the promise of like future land utility. Ah, okay. And uh, that's sort of uh, common at the moment. To be frank, there's a lot of metaverse projects that are coming up. Which is why for my Metaverse project, I'm definitely doing the engine first. Uh, so ensure that everyone can uh, take a look and even try it. The mm -hmm. beta is up. Uh, the beta is going to be up really, really soon. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, all the land sales, etc. That's that's going to occur. It's mm. not related. Look, like there's a lot of out 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 there projects right. that are selling uh, um, virtual land without having an actual game engine. So you're basically just buying a line in a decentralized database uh, and uh, I disagree sort of with that mm. so uh, yeah so um, if you want to jump into the metaverse try to find something established right. try to just find something with an engine try to find something that you can already try um, and try the gameplay try the controls try the community and then uh, you may invest ironically in uh, that part uh, is very much like real life too yeah. because you can you right. can buy a promise of land and a good house but right. until it's built or in front of your house yeah, better right. just to go with someone yeah. more established uh, contractor yeah. so uh, throughout this pandemic I've been very lonely at home well, lucky for me I have a family but one thing that I love is parties I miss going to parties and apparently one of the interesting things that interested me in this metaverse is the fact that you can actually host or attend a party and apparently pandemic you free. Right? pandemic free yeah yeah exactly with uh, total social distancing <laughs> yep. and we heard that you once held a, a actual part a big party held in the reality chain that was attended by 1200 participants wow. from all over the world can you tell us about it how did you get the word out why was your party so hot you need sure. a dj sure <laughs> uh, the party was hot it was uh, uh, an octopus network party on crypto uh. voxels uh, actually and um that was done a couple of months ago mm -hmm. um but today, like yeah. just today, well, well, today we're actually going to do another party. Oh, and wow. uh, we uh, we had um, what uh, 1,200 people come. Uh, but today we have registrations from over 1,400 people uh, wow. attending Whoa. one single party. Okay. And uh, that, that that single party is like in this huge in-world metaverse building. Uh -huh. I hope the server will hold up. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of parties. I, uh, after the pandemic, I've gone to more parties than before the pandemic. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I'm serious. It makes I'm it a lot easier. Totally serious. Like, I, yes, it's a lot easier. I go every week. Uh, we probably like sometimes, and uh, we go clubbing. We listen to music. We have mm -hmm. conversations. Mm. Uh, we pretend to get drunk, which is you know, which is <laughs> sounds kind of sad. But it's actually fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the the the, the, the community. Uh, the the thing is, metaverse is the mutual worlds part. Metaverse okay. is the social part. Mm. The meeting people part, getting okay. entertained with your friends, like you're, you're like you're seeing on screen. Yep. Is that yeah. me dancing? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that we and, desperately uh, need throughout yeah. uh, this pandemic. This is what actually you guys are doing when you're, you know, you're when you're hosting a party, then Bapandu, a real exactly. live party. It seems why, right? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really exactly. You have, we have event organizers. We have people who d uh, do the state decor, uh, oh, uh, the wow. musicians, some live musicians as well. Okay. 
um, the you, whole you can, production. You can see, like sometimes we zoom into the screen, like yeah. to the to the yeah. Then those are like sometimes musicians. We yeah. had a comedian at the first metaverse party. Oh, and, you, uh, what, probably, whether what you're aware of it or not, Carolyn, we've already been experiencing this, but one step back. For example, mm. we would stream into live uh, live feeds from a musician right. or a DJ in the yeah. pandemic, yeah. but we'd probably yeah. like message each other yes. or talk to each other in the chat box, yes. like oh, so and so is yeah, here. Still doing well, it this now. is like the next. Yeah. Well, this is where we got to go next. Yeah. <laughs> I just found our new weekend activity. We got to go to this uh, reality world. Uh, if I can add a few things, uh, William Gibson actually uh, envisioned uh, the concept of the metaverse. He called it cyberspace. And uh, cyberspace is, of course, a very broad term. Uh, texting can be called uh, cyberspace. Zoom these days can be called cyberspace. Mm -hmm. um, and then Neil Stevenson uh, created the term metaverse, right. uh, which actually is more focused on virtual worlds, but it, it, it has a lot of parallels with, with the word cyberspace. So um, in a very wide definition, the metaverse is everything digital that is social communication. Mm -hmm. um, so even Telegram, even WhatsApp can be yeah. called the metaverse under this huge definition. Um, it's just that, you know, it's more fun to do it in virtual worlds. Mm. Right. Definitely, so, so yes. it looks like fun. It is, so hopefully we're going to get invited uh, on your next party because we can't <laughs> do it this afternoon, Mabanu. Anyways, Mabanu, okay. uh, what is the current progress right now for the reality chain around the world? Can you please enlighten us with that? Okay, so Reality Chain, we're uh, going to be launching at the end of the year, uh, December uh, 2021. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're going to be launching it as an app chain on the Octopus Network. Uh, we're currently collaborating with Unique One Network and Myriad Social, which are two uh, blockchain projects to deliver their own metaverse. So we are actually a metaverse MSP or a metaverse as a service company. So if a company wants to create their own metaverse, they can contact us and oh. we can deploy a metaverse for them. Which that, that you're be connected to everyone else's. So it mm. would be like one single world. You just own like a city inside that world. Wow. Um, yeah. That, can be a real life sultan. Exactly. Uh, we can have <laughs> yeah. a sea today city. Uh, that's that, right. That would be amazing exactly. for all of us. Uh, Bandu, uh, real quick before yeah. we have to let you go. Uh, well, this, is, this is such a limitless uh, thing. I can't get my ra head wrapped, up, wrapped yeah. around it. When I was little, if you told me something like this would exist, I wouldn't believe you. Nope. But where do you see this uh, going to? What is the potential? What is the limit for something like this in the future? I I think this is uh, going to go very mainstream very soon. Uh, people are going to be using this for work. Um, I think some people are already using this for work, for collaborations uh, instead of yeah. Zoom, using avatars instead of just That's you so know cool. uh, video yeah. feeds. And, um, and with the rise of VR and AR, uh, things are going to be more and more realistic. And uh, a lot of the things that uh, happened uh, during this unfortunate pandemic has caused us to realize that you know the digital universe is very useful yeah and uh, we can meet people online yep. uh we can also meet people in the world. yes mm -hmm. this Definitely. is where life shifts yes. right yep exactly wow and thank you so much Mapandu, for your time we really do appreciate a more in-depth look and an easier and clearer understanding right. of the metaverse and we hope to be able to join one of your parties in the near future enjoy yours today in the afternoon yeah have a good thank one you. have a have a virtual drink for us uh, thank you bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> all right